We are now looking at measures of dispersion, and what we're looking at are the max, the min, the range, the standard deviation, and the variance on the st.dev, or standard deviation, tab. All right, the first thing we're going to be looking at is the max. We're going to find that by equal sign max, the data, Enter. equal sign for the min, min, And then the range, well, doesn't automatically come up, so we're going to have to create our own little equation for it. And the range is simply the max minus the min. So the high minus the low at equal sign. So it looks like a range of 3. So our low is 5, max is 8, so not a very high range here. Next we're going to be looking at standard deviation. Standard deviation helps us determine what percentage of a population or sample is within plus or minus certain boundaries. So for example, if the mean is such an is x, plus or minus one standard deviation is going to be about 68%. Two standard deviations is going to be about 95%, and three standard deviations. 99% of the data. And we'll start looking at this a little more in detail as we go through the example. But for the time being, um, let's use our fx. See this little button? It says insert function to find the standard deviation. So standard deviation. And Based on a sample, that's what we want. Remember that there is a standard deviation based on the population. We're going to try the sample. We're going to be using this sample for the time being. Okay. And then my range, my data is going to look like that. Okay. okay. You'll notice that the formula is up here as well as down here. You can enter it or edit it in either place. Now for our variance. That one is VAR. And enter. We highlight the data, go to the lower corner here, and pull it on over. And right away you can tell a big difference between the data. This one has a much narrow dispersion, this one has a much wider dispersion. Tell by the range. 18 versus 30. The standard deviation also shows it. 1, 6.2. The variance, very, very high here. So this data is a lot wider than this one. So let's graph it out. I'm going to our megastat, our add-ins, frequency distribution, quantitative, my input range, and I'm going to put in one for my interval width. Which okay. And then let's do it again for our y data. And I did that error again. So we're going to go back to data. We're going to post it right below it. Actually, let's move it up here. Okay. 
that way we can kind of see it side by side. All right, so a lot wider dispersion, much more narrow. That's pretty much what's going on there. Okay. You also notice that the variance doesn't make a lot of sense because it's saying the variance is 39.1556. Well, what ends up happening is the variance and the standard deviation are steps defining each other. So the first one is the variance. And if we take variance, so I'm just going to equal this number. That's going to be our variance. And then our standard deviation. Well, if we take this number, actually, if we take the square root of our variance. Square root is found by SQRT. And that number, we get our standard deviation. Do the same over here, and you get the same results. The standard deviation makes a lot more sense because it's actually within those numbers. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and delete that for a moment. That was just a demonstration on how they were found with each other. All right. So let's take a look at a couple of other ways of examining dispersion. So I'm going to go into Megastats, Add-ins, and I'm going to click on the Descriptive Stats. This is going to kind of sum up everything that we've learned so far. So my input range is going to be my x. I'm going to keep the mean, sample variance, min, max, range. Let's go ahead and click on the median, quartiles, mode, and outliers. Let's do a box plot, a dot plot, and a stem leaf plot. And yeah, let's leave it at that. We can also add the skewness. And we're going to push OK. And it's going to give you a lot of information. Count or N. It's going to be 10, the mean is 6.4, sample variance 1.6, which we found earlier, sample deviation 1.07, min max 5.83 for range, skewness looks like it's a little bit uh, skewed, not too bad. Then we have our quartiles, and quartiles are basically saying 25% fall within certain data points. So 25% are before 6, 6 between 6 and median, another 25, third quartile between 6 and 7, and then all the way out. Okay, not a lot of outliers, everything looks really good. And it looks like 5, 6, 7, 8, looks like there's 2, 4, 2, and 2. And this is what the box plot looks like. So basically, 50% or more of the data is within here, 25, 25, and the dot plot shows it as well in terms of there are 1, 2, points of 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, 2 and 7, and 2 and 8, which is why you kind of get this strange looking box here. Normally there would be a line in between there, but we have limited data. So 50% of the data is this box, which is the 6 and the 7, and then the 8 and the 5. The box, and then the little lines out here, are known as whiskers. Each one of these measures dispersion in a little bit different way. My personal favorite happens to be the box plot. So I'm going to go back to my data here on the standard deviation. I'm going to do the megastat descriptive stats. Same information, except I want to look at the y. All right, we're highlighting the y values. Looks like everything's good. Push OK. Again, we see many of the same things that we've seen before. Count 10, mean is 10, 11.6, 3.9, 39.6, 6.26 for variance standard deviation, 2, 20, 18, C skewness, our 
quartiles. Looks like it's a lot more, a lot better defined here. And a little bit better stem and leaf plot. Basically, zero is in front of it, so we have 2, 2, 7, 9, 14, 15, 15, 15, 17, and then 120. Just to say a single number of 20. This box plot shows it a little bit better where we have the two whiskers, so 25, 25, the full 50%. But then the most common number, which is this 15 number, or is up here, and the median is right through here, or the midpoint between the data. Remember, the previous box plot didn't have that median, but this one definitely does. So we have the dot plot, so it looks like 1, 2, so 0, 1, 2, we have two of those. 5, 6, 7, 1, 7, 1, 9, 1, 14, 3, 15s, 16, 1, 17, and 1, 20. So that's the dot plot, the box plot, and the stem leaf plot. All of which are very useful when looking at dispersion and how and distributions. Going back to our histograms, you can see how this is very chaotic and just kind of all over the place. This one's a little bit more normally distributed, but still kind of skewed to a little bit to the positive side there. When looking at data, it is very useful to go back and, well, to just go into it knowing that you're going to have to do descriptive stats right off the bat. And We've gone through these different tabs looking at the information from a lot of this perspective. So in a couple of clicks, you get this enormous amount of information. The count, the mean, the variance, the standard deviation, min-max ranges, all this information right off from the outset. And it's a good thing to know. It's a peek into the data before you start separating it out. You have to kind of know what it is and what it looks like in order to do or to know what tests to use. And so the next video is to help you visualize it. We've already done a couple of them. We've done histograms, we've done box plots, stem leaf plots, and dot plots. The next video is going to look at the graphs available, particularly scatter plots, line plots bar graphs and pie charts.